Good morning, afternoon, or evening, where you might be. I'm sorry, I'm running really, really late today. I didn't even want to talk about yesterday. having a uh, run of bad luck and yeah not even want to talk about yesterday wasn't even here uh and we were in the haunted jet because we need to get a move on because we have i decided to keep, <coughs> excuse me i decided to keep going south and just keep going and keep going and keep going and switch to the haunted jet because i need something faster and then it was giving us fits on landing and we kept crashing. Thank goodness I wasn't using Neofly. The money that we would end up paying out. So. We still have a long way to go. But we've made good distance. We made it from Colorado already all the way down to. We are here now. I believe in if I remember correctly where we ended. We were in uh San Salvador. We flew from Guatemala City to San Salvador, and then I said I should probably cut across here all of Guatemala uh, and Honduras and cut over this way and then cut south so we at least get an idea of what what the land around here looks like. So yeah, let's go ahead and um, depart from San Salvador, whatever this is here. Love means being someone else. 
And we'll, uh, so if you're going to follow along, starting at San Salvador, MSSS. And let's. Let's just cut straight over here. Right? Where's the airport here? All right. We'll set this as our arrival, and that is MHPL. And then for there, we'll uh, start cutting south. And we'll go to Managua. I need to break out a map. I don't know where, what any of this stuff is. I've never been down here. Give me just a minute here. I am actually pulling up a map. Once again, this is your man, Kazo Oslo, a.k.a. Dr. Oslo, representing Shaka. So, yo, call up. What's your name? Yeah, man. Oh, brother. Thank you for the love, man. Thank you. Yo, appreciate you. All right, brother. All right. That's brother. funny. It reminds me of. Uh... I'll have to move on. A little awkward. A little awkward. So, yeah, yeah it's your boy. Kazo Oslo, a.k.a. Dr. Oslo. And we asking the party people out there representing and listening in to Shaka Radio. What is your give it up? Don't okay, it up. so we are. Talk, one more caller. Caller, what's your name? Yo, Kazo, that don't even matter right now. Word. I just quit my job. I'm feeling so good, man. I hate that job. And I'm just feeling happy, man. Please play me something, dog. I need Oh, man, sound like you living it up. We gonna give you what you need right about now. There was Guatemala. It's crappy now. Right, I found I found Guatemala and El Salvador. So we are in El Salvador. Really? Guatemala is only that big, and we're crossing into Honduras. Okay. All right, so we are. It looks like we did cross like Guatem Guatemala. We crossed into El Salvador, and now we're gonna be cutting a. Ross El Salvador into Honduras and then as we go south again towards Managua that'll be going into Nicaragua and then below that is Costa Rica okay All right, well, just got to get to it. Um, is there any... Sanctify Bonet. 
What could be better than fashion the classic hole? Letters for the Uma, elevated schooners, schoolie D Lula, Mo Mega for Medulla. Who was she used to? The average rap rhetoric, midnight cowboy, hands with the leverage, clock you can set with the beat of the chest. Heat in the flesh, heat beats in your vest. Confess, what is on your mind? Water on a stone like the mantra of the grind. Hands up like a hallelujah. Yeah. Hands down if they don't move ya. Yeah. You came by, the feeling you came by. The one that give my ex women the stank eye. The one that made the record stay on the A side. The DJ running the back. So we learned last week that the reverse thrust in, uh, uh, does not work on the uh, on the Honda Jet, which was a problem, slowing down. And you got to be really, really careful with this thing trying to land it. A couple of times, um, it, we just couldn't slow down and crashed. And then I tried the approaches again, and it was able. I was able to to land it again. We we retried, and yeah, but you got to be really careful with this thing. Probably try something else, but it's a zippy little plane, and that's what we need right now. It's, Plane's got the auto throttle.
I picked up a new subscriber, it seems. I'm just now saying it. Lucy Heath. I've got a new subscriber, Lucy Heath. Thank you. Thank you so much. On a day like today, I don't feel like I deserve you, but thank you so much. Twenty minutes after the hour, you know what that means? It's time for the smoke break. So smoke if you got them. All right, so that is where we're at, according to Bush Talk Radio. It looks like we're high enough that I don't have to worry about anything. So uh, coming up ahead of us, right in front of us, is what? Got something coming up. Text too small for me to read at the moment. Over here, we've. You are 
starboard side is this. San Miguel is a stratovolcano in central eastern El Salvador, approximately 15 kilometers southwest of the city of San Miguel. On January 16, 2002, a minor eruption of steam, gas, and ash occurred from the summit crater, lasting three hours but causing no real damage to life or property. Carbon dioxide emissions had been monitored since November 2001, and their steady increase continued to build up until the eruption. Eleven years later, on December 29, 2013, San Miguel erupted at 10.30 local time spewing ash and smoke into the sky, and prompted the evacuation of thousands of people living mm. in a three kilometers radius around the volcano. It was preceded and caused by increased seismic activity beginning at 6.30 local time. Switch it. Why didn't you switch? Switch, baby, switch. The scene switcher is not switching. Switch. Double check that it's on. On. It's just uh, like everything else. It's uh, doesn't want to work right. Maybe it uh maybe it needs a smoke break too. Come on, computer, do your smoke break. Come on, we gotta get with it. We are on you. Oh that's better. So that was the volcano down here. We are right here. And I thought we were going to cross right over this one, but it looks like we're off course a little bit. So let me just play what's coming up ahead here. The El Mozot massacre took place oh, in and man. around the village of El Mozot in Morrison Department, El Salvador, on December 11th, 1981, when the Salvadoran army killed more than 800 civilians during the Salvadoran Civil War. The El Mozot massacre was preceded by La Matanza or the Massacre of People Peasants in 1932, the Student Massacre of 1975, and the Oscar Romero Funeral and Sample River Massacres of 1980. It was followed by the El Calabozo Massacre in 1982, the Tenango Guadalupe and Tenancingo Copapayo Massacres in 1983, and the Gaslinga Los Lanitos Massacre in 1984. In December 2011, the government of El Salvador apologized for the massacre, the largest in Latin America in modern times. The ground. In 1981, uh, sorry. various left-wing guerrilla groups coalesced into the Ferro Course, left -wing National groups. Liberation Front to battle El Salvador's fascist military dictatorship, the revolutionary government junta of El Salvador. Prior to the massacre, unlike many villages in the area, El Mozot had a reputation for neutrality. While many of its neighbors were largely Catholic, and therefore often influenced by liberation theology and sympathetic to the guerrillas, El Mozot was largely evangelical Protestant. The village had sold guerrillas some supplies but was also a place where the guerrillas had learned not to look for recruits. Prior to the massacre, the town's wealthiest man, Marcos Diaz, had gathered the citizens to warn them that the army would soon pass through the area in a counterinsurgency operation, but he had been assured that the town's residents would not be harmed if they remained in place. Concerned that fleeing the town would cause them to be mistaken for guerrillas, the townspeople chose to stay and extended an offer of protection to peasants from the surrounding area, who soon flooded the town. December 11th and 12th. Early the next morning, the soldiers reassembled the entire village in the square. They separated the men from the women and children and locked them in separate groups in the Son church, the convent, and various houses. During the morning, they proceeded to interrogate, torture, and execute the oh men in gosh. several locations. Around noon, they began taking the women and older girls in groups, separating them from their children and murdering them with machine guns after raping them. Girls as young as 10 were raped, and soldiers were reportedly heard bragging how they especially liked the 12-year-old girls. Of course they Finally, did. Finally, 
They kill the children at first by slitting their throats, and later by hanging them from trees. One child killed in this manner was reportedly two years old. After killing the entire population, the soldiers set fire to the buildings. The soldiers remained in El Mozote that night but, the next day, went to the village of Lost Trials and carried out a further massacre. Men, women, and children were taken from their homes, lined up, robbed, and shot, and their homes then set ablaze. If I got that right, that's all leftist government crap. You know, and so that's... Uh, okay, maybe, I, I don't know. I'd have to read more, and I don't know. I just know in America, we have a really bad leftist problem now. Where the left is on the rise again, all, all throughout America, and, you know, that's ultimately the kind of shit that they do. You know? We were talking in the last couple of days about certain types of people always getting into power, or when they get into power, the, you know, just the complete mess they always make of everything, and disregard for life, and disregard for everything, and, um, you know, how many examples in this world do we need? Right? So, I, I you know, I'm not going to tell anybody how to vote you vote how you want but you know that's what we're that's what we're headed for and we we've, we've got to we've got to get it under control we we can't let people that find it too easy to do these kind of things to people to be in power especially in the United States of America um, we, we have to stick to the founders intentions and they didn't want any of that. Lord almighty. What was over here? What did we pass over here up above us? Way far away, but let's see what it is. Lake Yojoa is the largest lake in Honduras with a surface area of 79 square kilometers and an average depth of 15 meters. At an altitude of 700 meters, it lies in a depression formed by volcanoes. The Lake Yojoa volcanic field consists of Pleistocene to Holocene scoria cones, craters, and lava flows. The west side of the lake is bordered by steep mountains and while the east side is adjacent to Cerro Azul Miamba National Park, the lake is situated on the highway that connects the two largest Honduran cities, Tegucigalpa and San Pedro Sula. For many people traveling between the cities, the lake serves as a rest area where they can appreciate the view and enjoy the fresh fried fish and other foods that are offered by the restaurants located on its banks. Well, that sounds lake nice. Lake Yojoa is a popular fishing destination and the surrounding area has a rich biodiversity, Almost 400 species of birds and 800 plant species have been identified in the region. However, it also is threatened by deforestation, cattle ranching, and development. The settlers of the communities around the lake are dedicated to the cultivation of fruits, vegetables, and basic grains. Nevertheless, many of these inhabitants earn their living from the sale of fish originating from the lake. People dedicate surrounding areas to the growing of coffee plants. Coffee grown near Lake Yojoa, in Santa Barbara, is particularly well known. This will be down here to the south. Tan Suza Flight 414 was a scheduled flight from Juan Santa Maria International Airport, San Jose, Costa Rica to Toncontin Airport in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, with a stopover at Augusto C. Sandino Airport in Managua, Nicaragua on the 21st of October 1989. Flown with a Boeing 727-200, to the flight crashed into a hill of the oh, mountain man. range after the pilots failed to follow a special landing procedure required for the arrival to the airport, killing 131 passengers, leaving 15 survivors. 20 initially survived, but 5 died before treatment, due to a delay in rescue personnel from the bad weather. This accident is the deadliest accident in Central American history. 
aircraft history, the aircraft was a Boeing 727-224, registered as N88705, leased from Continental Airlines, and first flown in 1968. It was delivered to Tansersa in 1981. Flight and Accident The flight crew of 414 consisted of 34-year-old Captain Raul Arcata, 26-year-old First Officer Rianiero Canales and Flight Engineer Marco Figueroa, three employed at Tansaza. Tegucigalpa ATC cleared the flight for the vor dme approach to runway 01. Because of high terrain in the area, the approach uses a series of three step-downs from the initial approach fix of 7,500 feet MSL. The crew began a continuous descent from about 7,600 feet MSL at about 11 nautical miles from the airport, rather than following the prescribed step-down procedure, which led to the accident site. The oh, aircraft's descent profile was well below the published step-down course for the entire approach. The aircraft impacted a mountain known as Cerro de Hula at the 4,800 feet MSL elevation, approximately 800 feet below the summit. 4.8 nautical miles from the Tegucigalpa runway 01 threshold. At impact, the aircraft was in approach configuration. The plane broke into three sections. The first part contained almost all of the survivors of the accident due to the close to stall, nose high configuration at impact. Aftermath, while the National Transportation Safety Board and the Civil Aviation Authority of Honduras were investigating the crash, Agata, Canales and Figueroa were charged with manslaughter and negligence and went to trial. However, the case was never resolved. Five months later another aircraft, an L-188 Electra operated by Sousa Carga registered as HRTNL, crashed close to Flight 414's crash site, with a similar cause, making it the third accident by Sousa in six months. Due to its bad safety history and corruption, Tansersa went into bankruptcy in the 1990s and ceased operations in 1994. Man, just a bunch of tragedy today. All right, there's not much, a whole lot. There's a big city coming up that we're going to be passing you know, over here to our starboard side and pretty much nothing after that. I'm going to put on the music. I have to... Uh... I have to step away from the computer for a minute and take care of something. I will be right back. Get back and enjoy the flight, folks.
Thank goodness we haven't crashed. All right. Oh, what's up with the music? The music was paused, really? Uh, uh, that figures. Doing a scan, looking to see if there's anything else out there. Nothing. Nothing between here and there. Then there's nothing all the way through here. shoot for some place down here we want to do an emergency landing and that's always fun I love how the computer in the auto throttle it has us just right there on the edge of an overspeed. It's like, we're gonna go as fast as we can go.
better. All right, so if you haven't seen the interior of the plane, sorry, I've been mostly concentrating on externals, but... in this plane they've got the suits facing each other Yeah, it would be awkward though if you don't know the other people you're flying with. Yeah, that would be kind of awkward. Soul flight if you really don't know the people that you're that you're traveling with. Uh Newspaper. Gotta get a book. They should make it so those can spin around. We have the technology. Well, you know me. You know me, I'm all about couches. Uh, these still seem to, I mean, for this plane, I mean, it, I, I, you're right. I mean, I'm sure they have different packages. You know, this is your formal package or standard formal. But you know me, I'd want to uh, see here. This is a, this person is the person that gets to sit Without looking at anybody, he has to look at the door. Like, yeah, let's throw an extra seat in there. I think getting in and out of this thing is would be a pain in the butt. I suppose, I think it'd be easier than some other planes, but I've never really liked the the lack of space that the pilots get. You know, it's always such an ordeal to like have to get in and out of these seats. I think this would be a real pain in the ass. Like. Okay, turn sideways and then you gotta scoot in here and slide down and you know it's not cush. I mean add another four or five feet onto the plane, man, so the pilot can come in. Ah, how are you today? Press a button and you know oh you can just slide right on in here. Press button, oh there's my seat. Pilots always get the last consideration, it seems, when they design getting in and out of these things. And they always put something right there. They always, again, you, you know, oh, now what if I bump any of this crap coming in? 
Can't you just, can you have slid that up? Do we really need that middle monitor there, really? Well, you guys got to share it. What, what, what? I could put all of that on this screen. And I could just pop up this screen over here if I wanted to, right? Well, yeah, but... Guys, really, come on. This is... This is just now showing off for showing off sake. We've got three monitors in the cockpit. <laughs> Plus, you know, they've got the additional iPad features over here. Well, then what do you need three monitors for? Move this stuff up. As a matter of fact, just move these to the sides, right? Put that one over there, put that one over there. In cars, you just open this door and get in and out. That'd be easy. But here, yeah. Now move all this stuff up at an angle. You can angle it from right at this point right here. And angle it to where it just comes there. So when you get in and out. I would be the worst person the engineers would have to listen to. I think I'd be the best, personally. The engineers have to listen to when it comes to designing these things yeah couches all along here couches on both sides and I don't know that I mean are they playing a board game were we gonna put a table in here what's What's the reason for having so much space here? Leg room. Okay. But if they're... But again, I've got couches. So. Right, and that would give us that extra room we need. You know me, I always like having a, the drink station back here. Coffee, drinks, whatever you want to drink. You know me, in my imaginary plane, there's everything. This money's not a money's not a problem, right? Snacks? Heck yeah! I even got a 3D food printer back here for foods that we don't have. I have no idea what you're talking about, Mister. But try using the 3D printer over there to make your food. <laughs> <laughs> Those are going to be a real trip. <laughs> they have them now in primitive form. But the idea that they have something like that in primitive form means that in the future there's going to be an advanced form. As we move more and more towards Star Trek replicator technology. And it's going to be interesting because up to this point in time, still, everything is about resources. That's what they tell us anyway. <laughs> there's not enough resources. Have you flown the globe, sir? Or madam, there's not enough resources. Have you ever been in an airplane? Ever? Oh, you did? You were in an airplane? Did you ever look out the window? No, you didn't, right? Yeah, you got the middle seat, didn't you? But even flying great distances, didn't didn't you get a, a sense of how much is actually out there? Those are the same people that write reports, and I swear, with my hand on my chest, the articles exist. I've seen them. They're out there. I didn't hallucinate this. One person, one crazy person, wrote that in the next 80, not 800, 80, 80. That there will be no more green spaces on Earth. We will have covered everything up with concrete and asphalt. Eight zero AD. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Eighty years that we will cover the entire planet with concrete and asphalt. That person's never been out of their neighborhood. 
We've run out of oil. Stop lying. It's a fossil fuel. Stop lying. Anyway, back to a positive, non-hostile political. I'm so sick of it. So sick of everything. All right. So back to a non-hostile thought. Everything has been up to this point based on the resource. And to some degree, it's true. I mean, they're, they're, you can run out of resources. And that's where I went off thinking, no, well, trying to explain it. There really isn't. They want you to believe it, that there's a shortage of resources, but there really isn't. It's a shortage of resources right there where they're at. Not for other people. Huh? They don't want those people. I said I wasn't going to get political. All right. Once we can become so efficient with our recycling and replicating technologies. This used to amuse me. It, gro it does gross me out. And I understand how it grosses everybody out. It grosses people out the conclusions that we arrive at. But the idea that we can recycle every bit of everything, doesn't matter what it is, anything. You can powder anything. You can micro powder everything. And, if, and, and soon in the future, they'll have micro, micro powdering. And then in the future, they'll have micro, 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 micro powdering. And then they're going to have, and we've already, at that point, they've already hit nanite. Now we're going nanite level down. And then nanite level four micro powdering. And it'll probably keep going from there. I mean, so everything, there's no shortage of anything, anything, period. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> And as a filler, things can be used for other things, yada, 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 yada. Point is, is that all these landfills and trash, there's no trash. Right now, there's trash because we're idiots. Right now, if I, if my family were the ones who opened landfills, well, I'd still be happy because people are, are dumb and they just want to throw things out anyway. But... Somebody who's going to, going to go into the recycling business and powdering business for 3D printing technologies, large scale, you know, home scale and large scale, and then large, large scale. But owning a landfill, you can, you're can you already set up for large, 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 large recycling powdering. So yeah, I, I talked to a friend who's got some 3D printers. I'm not into it myself. I love thinking about it. Like, can you make your own powder? I could. Why don't you? Don't they got a Black & Decker 3D printing powering machine, powdering machine by now? Come on, Black & Decker, really? They've got to have uh, preschooler... Play school, 3D powdering kits for kids, right? No? Anyway, so there's no trash. Everything you throw in your trash, it, it, your trash can should be powdering machines. And in the future, it'll be powdering. It'll be so smart, it'll separate it all and... Separated into different uh, different containers, right? And then you just go pour that stuff into you know you get the idea, don't you? Is that any material is going to be needed in a three D printing technological future?
going back to the landfill. Yeah, so if you own a landfill, man, you're you're one of the richest people in the world at the moment. So arriving at the uh, the ones that can be a little bit gross is when we, is when we get into food. And we can recycle, I mean, in the farms, on the farms, every little bit. As long as it's cleaned up, you know. They're like, well, that doesn't look good enough for Walmart quality produce. We want our stuff to look prettier. Uh-huh. Right. So, everything, every square, every centimeter that they pick up off of a field. <laughs> Excuse me. Every stalk, every stem, every leaf, every everything, every bit of biomatter that is collected in a harvest, everything that would be considered throwaway, it's going into something. It's going to be powdered and it's going to be used as something. Right, so <clears throat> the efficiency in the food <laughs> The amount of food we will be able to get from an average harvest today in the future, the yield is going to be much greater. The yields will be much greater. All right, so then there's the idea that once you've reached a certain level of smallness when it comes to recycling a, a, a bit of matter. All right, let's say it was a piece of food and it's rotted. We've got a rotten apple sitting on our table. It's all shriveled up. You know what I'm talking about. We've got a bowl of dried fruit, let's say. That's just about ready to, to mold. Heck, some of it's even molded, right? Well, what do you do? Well, I'll throw it out in the yard for the critters if they want to stomach it. Hey, it's penicillin, isn't it? Penicillin for animals, that's the way I think. All right, so, uh, we wouldn't, in the future, why would you do that? You take that fruit and you throw it into your Black & Decker Martha Stewart Duck Drexler home powdering thing, recycling thing for food printers. And like I said, it's not just going to mush it up. Oh, yeah, it'll start by mushing it up. But in my mind, we're already uh, in this discussion, we're already down to the level four nanite processing stage. So not only did we just mush that apple, it's gone through a series of breaking apart that we've broken it down to molecules, atoms, you know, we're down, down to the, you can't break it up much further from here, sir, says a minion nanite down at level four, looking up at us. I can't. I, it, I've broken the apple as far as I can down. Now I got this one particle here. I can't break this particle, sir. Do you want me to create a nuclear reaction? No. No, you're right. Level four rep, uh, recycling nanite, you're right. You're down to one particle. Well, what do we do when we're at that stage? We recreate the apple. Right now, starting with that guy down at the bottom and putting all those parts back together that they just took apart. They can put it back together. <laughs> they will be able to put it back together. Uh, minus all the, the goofy stuff that we didn't want in it. Or things that they may have found in it in the breakup process. They're like, ah, we all the crap stuff went over there, sir. And you know what? 
that that stuff that went over there will probably be able to be used for something else. There's even at that level, there's no it's just molecules and atoms. You can use them for other things. You know, it may not be good in my apple, but that's going to be great in, uh, in Grandma Sushi. Mmm, the umami. Oh, I can see those umami molecules now. Mmm, mmm. Three minutes out? Really? I'm not ready to land yet. My head's in the clouds. But we must. What is it? MHPL. Getting a clearance from the uh, the tower there. We have no maps. I haven't found any uh, Mexican maps. Oh, well, I was from to start with Mexican Mexican uh, flight maps. Now we're down in South America. One, we can slow down. Turn off auto throttle. to listen to us good that's working all right so one let's slow slow the heck down and now we want to start coming down we're way high and that is true let's get down to six to start Begin flight level change, and with the decrease in the throttle, we should begin descending. It's working. Still 235 knots. Bring the throttle down some more. Our speed is good for under 10,000 feet. We're right on the edge of it, anyway. They usually want they usually want you under 250 knots below 10,000 feet in jets. So when you take off, unless you're doing some military flying, you don't want to be all right off the runway and just you know be going nine hitting 350 knots off the runway unless you like that or you know. Whatever. Play it how you want. Anyway, that's just a rule I picked up along the way. That in most airliners, yeah, when you take off from most runways, air traffic control advises stay below 250 knots, below 10,000 feet. Okay. Eight thousand feet. Uh, don't see any mountains. I'm gonna look for a procedure. They don't have anything.
So what I'm trying to do here, you might know, I'm just trying to get us down to 3,000, 3,500 or so, and trying to keep our descent speed under control, even with throttle now all the way down. The plane is just hauling all an axe. All right, so we're starting to level out, and we're gonna do a turn. Need to make sure there's some throttle in there now. What it's gonna do. I think it's taking us out to that point. See if it turns around. Wait. All right, we can come down some more. Alright, we're hitting the waypoint. What you gonna do? See if we can set it up again. And sec. We haven't come down yet. Come down. Come down. Come on. All right, let's turn back towards Mansec now. Do a direct to. That's what I want. Great. Now we're going to be doing a big cycle. Yeah, about half laps. That's fine. All right. Oh, today is a day for dozing. That's why I got started late. Woke up early and I'm like, great. Plenty of time. Sat down, had my coffee. Passed right out. So, you haven't missed missed much. We're traveling, uh, I think we're in, Hon uh, I want to say we're in Honduras right now. I have to check them out. Careful trying to land the Honda jet. 
be as touchy and found out she has no reverse thrust that I've been able to figure out according to all the documents out there, the comments in the chat community, the reverse thrust isn't there. Which definitely caused some problems. I've crashed this thing a couple of times now. But then I went back and tried the approaches again and was able to successfully land them. But, it's a trip. And then, she doesn't have good brakes. She needs, she needs much better brakes. Or if there's a way to set brake tolerances. I don't know, I don't have that. Let me check that anyway. No, I don't really have the time. I gotta get in for landing here. But I wonder if there is something in the setup. I doubt it, but maybe there is something for stronger brakes. That's what we're trying to achieve. Damn you. Yeah, when it catches up to you, it catches up to you. Happy Friday to you. Grab my coffee. Cheers. It being Friday, I should probably break out a little something stronger. A little shot of this, a little shot of that. And celebrate the weekend with you. Maybe a little bit. What, where are we at? We're only at 2.30. We're making great time. We're going to be heading down to Costa Rica after this landing. 
Yeah, so I think I will. I think I'll run in the uh, in the kitchen and grab something a little bit stronger and start celebrating the weekend with you. Are you gonna go? Are you turning? What are you doing? You're oh, you're not turning. Okay, turning off the autopilot. It's done its job. Time for me to do my job. A cigarette out. Maybe it was still going out to that point. Uh, I think it was. Smarter than me. Yeah, it was. The autopilot was taking us out to this point. Yikes. Come on, play. Oh, my lord. Try to do this one again. Uh, I don't think I'm comfortable. I'm actually going to pull off. Try another go around. And you should call it in. I should call that goof up in. Oh, really? They didn't see it as a missed approach? That's fine. Okay, so we'll do the crosswind. You're excited for the weekend because you're going to the local airport where you have to do winter maintenance on airplanes and the gliding lessons on Sunday. That's what I should do. That's the job I should go get. Is just doing maintenance on the planes.
Oh yeah, man. Keeping every plane in nice condition. Yeah. I would definitely like to learn how to um, work on light engines. Just be, you know, learning about uh, the proper torque pressures on everything and how vibrations, especially I can imagine how rough it was in the early days uh, that the planes vibrate so much that over time, everything will eventually become loose. That just through the vibrations, things will become loose. So yeah, learning how to then go back in and tighten everything up to the right specification. And then doing all the waxing and polishing. It's those loose screws that really scared me to death. Detailing, not so much. No, that's not a downside. Look at that as an upside. There are guys out there like me. You can remember that. There's guys out there like me that should be doing something as cool as that. And that is a great way to spend a day. Because what it, you know, what it could lead to in the future. What what other kind of great planes will you eventually possibly get to set your hands on? Yeah, so remember me sitting here thinking, man, I should be doing something as awesome as that. She's drifting really far. Everything's going so smooth, and then this last turn, she drifts out real far. And then it's like I have almost no rudder control. Almost. There we go. Come on. Damn you. Um, baby be much more excellent make sure that the those extended. Get the brakes on. Come on. Slow down. Got the spoilers and the brakes on. What? Well, we landed. It wasn't pretty at all. And we slid to a stop. Yes! Yes! Exactly! I would love to be sitting in that class. I would love to be sitting in that class with you. 
and going, at the end of this class, it may seem boring, but at the end of this class, if you can't get up there and teach this class, you can't take just that amount of time. I would sit here and watch videos all day long. I would sleep with videos on. Any, any video I could find on navigation, I would play in a repeating, rotating playlist over and over and over and over for days because I couldn't get it. It wasn't gelling. I, I would go into the simulator and I would try it and I just, my, I don't know what was wrong. It was like the landing thing. I had a, a like a mental block and I couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden the moment I, I get it, it was a, an epiphany and it was a joyous moment. And so, yeah, it may seem like a lot of time but, at the end of the class, will you absolutely, can you come back now with me and let's say, okay, let's just do VOR to VOR flying today. Not only are we going to do VOR to VOR flying, we're going to be changing our vectors, and we're going to be coming in on and changing the vectors that we're flying in, the radials that we're flying in on. Okay, now, let's use two VORs, and let's triangulate a position in space, and let's both try to meet at that same area in space following these radials, right? So the joy of flying with radials and to be able to, you know, again, using two or more, two VORs to triangulate. Yeah, who said planes can't drift? That's funny. So yes, after that eight hour class, <coughs> you should be able to say, I get it, and get up there and teach the class or go into the simulator and make a video on demonstrating. That's why I make all these videos. They're like, well, you're not very good. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm making all these videos. To show you that I'm trying to learn. So if you were to go back to my channel and look through all of my playlists, my video playlists, all the um, flight training videos that I've done, I'm sure in almost every single one of them, I'm like, look, I'm not a professional pilot. These are for me to demonstrate to, if I decide to go to flight school, if I decide to do this for real. I want to demonstrate to those people that I've tried to put the time in. That I've tried to, at the end of the lesson, I've tried to create a video demonstrating that, here you go, professor. I've, I'm teaching the class today. Watch my video and tell me what I've done wrong. So I, I use all these videos as, as my own documentation on how far I've come. All right. <laughs> and then I come in for a crash landing. Um, all right, so let's get set up for another, another flight. All I can say is, you're at this point, you're paying for it. You better enjoy it. You're actually getting somewhere that it's going to be on paper that you know how to do this. All I've got is YouTube videos. That ain't going to work when I actually, if I were to try for real world stuff. Hey, look, look, I can do it in YouTube. <clears throat> Sorry, your resume. No, no, no. Look at the YouTube videos. I can do this. Okay, so we are here now. And we're going to head to Costa Rica. So taking off, if you want to follow along, we are at... Do, do, do. Where to Lem... What is it to put up the name now? Or are we over here on this dirt one? That one wasn't... doesn't even look like where we're at. We're on a dirt one. Oh well, whatever. Taking off from here. And now, let's... Going south. Dun, dun. There's nothing on Bush Talk Radio all through here. This is really like... Primitive world. I think this is Nicaragua down here. 
have to look at the map again. But yeah, let's shoot for Managua. M-N-M-G. 154 miles. Alright. And then we'll start making our way down here to this next little stretch. I love your flying, but people that would come into my uh, my live streams when I was doing that stuff and concentrating on all that stuff, they didn't want to do it with me. Again, they're just watching me fly. That's cool. I don't mind, but to really join in, uh, you know, this is definitely where we were at. So something else to remember about the Honda Jet, she doesn't like dirt, dirt runways. That was the first time I've ever skid. Sky for Sims thing. Doing that. Altitude back up to 13. Come on, baby. Come on. There's rotation. like a fly-by-wire either if you let go it doesn't hold <clears throat> so like in, in most aircraft that are fly-by-wire if you like pull you get into a position that like that altitude at uh, that angle and you let go of the controller joystick so you know hold that position this one no not so much not at all all right kick on the autopilot turn on nav and do a flight level change. And also, now that our throttle is still in full, we can hit auto throttle. And it should manage the throttle. Yep, okay, there it goes. So if you leave it, after takeoff, if you leave it in the up, the full open throttle position, you can engage auto throttle.
That's what my neighbors must think about me and my, my friend. I have no life. Come on, man. I don't do... <laughs> I'd like to say that I'm still an artist, but I haven't produced anything in a year. But the first hundred years of my life, man, a monster produced and produced and produced and produced. <clears throat> and I'd like to get back to it eventually, but... You know, after anything after a while just becomes too much. And then when it becomes a job, it becomes too much. So that's pretty much all I do these days is I'm um, gaming. Lights are on 24-7. <laughs> I'm your annoying neighbor now. Hey, we are not on the right. We are not on the right course. It is not. It did not kick in the nav. Let's try that again. To be turning. Let's go to our flight plan. There it goes. All right. We're good. Gears up, flaps are up. Primitive world. They probably have Walmart. Or why no? That's what I imagined flying down here is just, you know. Now we're starting to get out into like primitive third world. If I have a Walmart, but it's going to be far away back where we were. Almost seems like we're not. No, it broke. It didn't. It didn't follow the GPS. Ah. What are you doing? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I'm. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm at a lower of elevation than my neighbors. Can all spy on me? Wonder what I'm doing all day.
Yeah, let's go. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna run into the kitchen and grab something to drink. We're gonna start celebrating the weekend. I'm gonna do that right now, one moment. I have some Coca-Cola and some Jack Daniels. I think that's where we're gonna start, one moment. I'm not a big drinker, uh, but I have uh, but I have all this left over from New Year's. Shame to let it just sit there now. So I still have a whole bunch of uh, Coca-Cola and Jack Daniel's whiskey. So, cheers! Here's to your health, wealth, prosperity. Wish you the best of everything. Take advantage of all the greatness that you have ahead of you. Cheers. You don't want to end up being over 50, not knowing what you're going to do, and still dreaming. You're young and brave and courageous, and you're actually doing it, so... all they have for drinks is that always put aluminum foil on the windows and make them think that you're a spy. Hang a few wires out the window. Make it look extra suspicious. It's an interesting river down below. Almost like it's saying something. Looks like writing. Yeah, doesn't that look like writing? Eat at Joe's. Yeah. 
Yeah, this was a Warner Brothers cartoon. Always eat at Joe's. Got a little nice happy face at the end of it. Little sideways emoji. they designed the the way they designed the pylons and the way they mounted the engines on this thing that's that's such a trip doesn't seem like it makes sense but you know i'm sure in a computer somewhere this it makes perfect sense but when i look at it i'm like wow why did you do it that way again in a computer it makes perfect sense yeah And she's looks like she's got a, a belly on her. She's a well fed plane. And it does seem like there's a lot more room you could access behind that seat. Because yeah, look at all that room behind the engines. All right, so if we go back into it and and look at the last seat. Right, we're right there on the way.
There's all this room still. I see a hatch there. So you've got a lot more room, and I wonder if it's because, you know, I guess they don't imagine you sitting right next to the engines. I don't know. All I know is that in my imaginary planes, whenever I'm doing these live streams, I'm always talking about how I, at the back of the plane... Okay, so there's some cargo nets back there. So maybe this does open. Yeah, because here's a bunch of cargo nets. Yeah, I'd open this up. This is where I want our little bar, right? Folks, I'm always talking about having our snack bar. But it looks like there's even more. I mean, we still have all this space you could crawl into. And then that's not all the way wide. Oh, look, there's a toilet. <laughs> I'm always saying we need one of these. Okay, so that is the bathroom back there. Okay, I'm seeing this for the first time. Never knew this was here. We've got a bathroom. I must be a vampire. The little push button right there. Knowing the Japanese, actually, the probably the real one probably has 20 buttons. Knowing the Japanese, man, they love their toilets. Well, that's awesome. Good. We So we did find our drink and snack and bathroom compartments back there. An APU. APU is usually on here, isn't it? Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Right with a preheated toilet seat. Uh, engine bleeds. I don't think it does have an APU. Um, over here, you've got these startup controls. There's your battery. External power. Bus tie. Our textures in here are crap.
So yeah, just the battery. Uh, if you want to consider that your APU. We can external power it, but yeah, that's it. We do have some tall mountains up ahead. Tall herb. Looks like we're going to shoot right between them. minutes after the hour i was ranting earlier before you got here about um you know the state of the world they're like resources man resources there's just not enough resources and at a local level i understand that on uh, from a pilot's perspective you know i i don't understand it right it's just resources you don't have where you're at huh? but plenty of people have i mean you know my gosh there's just so much land out there and as you fly and the more and more you fly the more you realize just you know uh, maybe in Europe it's different and I'll get a different perspective when I get over there and start flying around but it seems that there's still plenty of there's still plenty of land everywhere on this planet and there's still plenty of resources it's just the resources that we are wanting to get to we just always have excuses for everything well, you know, or logistic, practical logistic reasons why we can't get the certain resources. But I get it, but at the same time, I don't. The world's going to run out of oil. Stop lying. There's more resources, resources out there that you can shake a stick at. I was also saying I read some article. I swear. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good, uh, great time with that activity. I think. Again, just remember, guys like me, it would be right behind you. Big thumbs up. Yeah, man. You are doing. You are doing the right thing. You're doing something so cool. The rest of us just dream about it. So, yes. Have a great time. Have a great uh, have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday. I 
I believe. look over some of the other stations we have available to us today we've been on funk we've been on the funk channel all day to work on planes in any capacity that's the job I should be doing at the moment the plane she is a turn it On course, it's kind of doing a side to side a little bit, though. Do we have a wind setting? Bearings. charts right yeah and brief now uh, I don't want to use that
Okay, that's running so cool. 72 degrees, 71 degrees. Oh, that's cool. We got our lighting at our feet. Open our doors right now, but oh, nice.
for runway 10. Oh, it's got an ILS. That's nice. Expected something a little bit different from this station. Gotta be careful. Eight thousand feet.
Yeah, with no charts, a little bit difficult. Not too bad, but, you know, better keep your eyes open, that's for sure.
36 minutes after the hour. Cheers. Still celebrating with a little uh, beverage. Cheers. Here's to you.
All right, ILS approach. Should be intercepting the glide slope right now. And it should be beginning our descent for us. Good. I think I broke it.
Caminé todo el sendero sin descansar Y solo me queda el cuero para trabajar Cuando consiga un trabajo, lo juro yo Iré a comprar una joya de la mejor Pa' ofrecerle al amor mío a la niña que Me tenía de amor y vaya en cama Come on, get down. No tengo, nada tengo, que yo no tengo, no tengo, yo no tengo, no tengo, que yo no tengo, no tengo. Hey, la 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 la. I thought that was a turn. Funny. Autopilot, auto throttle is independent of autopilot. Well, that's something. Autopilot was disengaged with landing uh, right at the end there, and so I've just parked it, and I couldn't get the en engines into a shut off position. So it's like a magnetic lock. Um, and bring the throttle back up. You can bring it to there, right? All the way back down to, to no throttle. But it doesn't actually bring it all the way down. It stops right there. You have to manually, like, I guess, push the button on the side here in the real world and pull it all the way down into this position. So that's one of the first things you learn um, when you start flying these. You're like, how in the hell do I shut the engine off? Because you're so used to being... Anyway, that is how you do it. So we are at uh, We're in Managua now? 
Yeah. Nicaragua? Yeah, we're here now. So in a straight line, it seemed like we went very far. We started here in Guatemala. No, we started in San Salvador over here. So in a straight line, but we went all the way over to here first. And then came all the way back this way. I guess that's a good place to wrap up for today. Managua. <laughs> this music. We're up for 1,218 flight hours. I don't know if it's registering it all right, but I, it's not that big of a deal. Alright, you have a fantastic weekend. I'll be back on Monday unless something pops up. And we'll continue our. Now it's cross countries. Light south. So we've done the United States, east and west. And now we're doing south. Then we need to do a north. And then we're going to move over to Europe and kind of do the same thing. Or we're beginning a world tour. We're going to spend a good amount of time in Germany with Hans and Henning probably back to doing a lot of glider flight, glider flying training while we're there with Hans and Henning to the point where we're going to try to do a cross country in gliders that's going to require a lot of wind watching but I'll bet we can do it so we're going to at least try one cross country glider flight that's going to be a tough, tough challenge. All right. Again, uh, grab my drink again. Jack and Coke. Cheers. Here's to your health, well-being, and prosperity. Please like and subscribe. I can use all the help you can give me. If you are into... If you are into The Sims... And you have an interest in where The Sims is going. I put up my impending prediction of total doom and disaster for The Sims 5, basically. What they're what anything what where they're going to go forward from here. So I posted a video in my Sims folder, Sims 4, on Sims 5 being dead without SimCity and dot dot dot. It's only about six, six, seven minutes long. But if you enjoy The Sims and you have an interest in where The Sims should go, or a lot of people don't think it's going to go the direction I am saying, I am completely, I have a different viewpoint than most other people so far. All the other YouTubers out there that are sit talking about The Sims and what they want it to do in the future with Sims 5. Well, I would like to say that my my ideas they seem completely on the far end of things from what people want but honestly I don't believe that they are and I try to make my point in that video so again if you have any interest at all yeah please check that out give it some uh give it some comments it could really use some comments all right folks oh it switched again we need a. Sm I can't wait for uh, AI to come into programs like this, so it knows what you're doing, and it assists you as like a co-director. Not giving me the screen that I want. I want that. All right. 
Okay. Again, have a great weekend. Look at that bad boy.